In our first story, over 100 inhabitants of the Budubram settlement in the central region, including 15 females, have been arrested in a dawn swoop on Thursday. The operation in the settlement, which used to host Liberian refugees, involved scores of armed policemen and soldiers and comes weeks after two police officers were killed in the same community. Police in the statement described the operation as an intensified war against crime, which involves taking the fight to the criminals. Maxwell Agbagba has more. Sirens blaring as the armed policemen and soldiers transported the suspects to the police headquarters in Accra for screening. Some residents we have been speaking to say the security personnel stormed into their homes around 3 a.m. and searched their rooms, having locked down the entire community. Whilst those who had weapons and other contraband materials were arrested, those who tried to flee the community were thoroughly searched. We, we saw quite a number of soldiers. When we were coming here, we saw a, a lot of buses. Um, many of them had military men in there. We saw police officers. Some of the people that we We've been speaking to here tell us that about 200 um, police officers and soldiers came to this community and they've been here um, since 12 o'clock a.m. President of the Liberian community in Ghana lauded the swoop as a good way to take out people who engaged in nefarious activities in the Budubram settlement. He, however, kicked against suggestions that it should be demolished. We are we can assure you that Liberians are not engaged into major crimes that were is panicking and are destructive and evil. It might be some, uh, you know, some minor domestic problems or whatsoever, mm. but crime, to, you know, armed robbery, killing and all of those things is far from us. Look, we came to, to seek refuge here mm. and I think Ghanaians are very good to us. To demolish a township is to make a disaster, mm. but, but, but to, to carry on um, security um, uh, operative, you know, to, to fetch out the criminals. Mm. Because we, we did demolish every town mm. or because it's a Liberian camp. You cannot demolish every town that you see, you know, carry on the, whether there's crime, whatsoever crime, or major crime, or minor crime, whatsoever. It is the perception of the people. You see, but to impose, you know, demolition on a group of people who come to seek refuge, it's not the best process. It's not the best thing to do. Some residents who have been speaking to join you say the assertion that the settlement is haven for criminals is no longer a perception but reality. They need to come after every two weeks, one is that business. They need to come and tell every criminal because Liberians that are not our criminals. I mean, honest to you. So they will come, a Liberian part of them, then they carry them. We don't have time for that, so we are okay with that. So they can come back again and do a search again. The two policemen they kill, it hurt me. You understand me? It hurt me. It hurt me in my soul up to now. Even in my bedroom, I feel it in my body and soul. So now, and that thing happens, they say, go man, but the brown way is Liberia camp. The guy who thing makes up. People will feel it's Liberian. And what will be talish around that Liberians is the kind of person doing kind of things in this vicinity. We've been here for a long time. Yeah, what is the rumor that's circulating is true. That's the fact. But equally so, most of the Liberian here, we are not involved into the kind of criminal activity. Going to kill police officer, going to arm rob. It's very difficult to find labor in this kind of major criminal activity. So who, who, who are those involved in Those that came here just recently. Because after demolishing uh, Ofatama, Nima, so Eros, that this guy that came on the camp here, this causing problem for us here. For everything, most of them they are not living on the camp. Camp manager and Ghana Refugees Board representative Arnold Ubimpe says of the 141 people arrested, only four were Liberians. So far, it's four family heads who reported to me that they take their family. So we are working towards that. I inform my managers in Accra because I'm a gun on the shoulder here. My managers are in Accra. I'll inform them and the next step will be taken immediately. I'll say I'm happy. Why am I saying that? This is a refugee camp and it's a normal thing. And it's a Ghanaian community. The camp has grown such a way that we are in the midst of Ghanaians, you know. Those days, this place was a bushy area. You understand me? But, for example, we have other camps in Ghana. They are isolated from the town. But now you cannot see the... Well, there was another swoop, this time in the Western region, involving 400 security personnel aimed at reducing the high speed of crime in the region, including kidnapping, robbery and murder. Sweets and alcoholic beverages suspected to be laced with narcotics and other gadgets were retrieved in the operation at European Town and the Albert Busumchi Sam Fishing Harbour. 
the total number of 400 security personnel drawn from the regional security agencies. The operation was conducted around European town and was located in some uh, fishing harbor. The operation was supported by one Air Force helicopter, one naval ship, two naval boats, and one marine police boat. In recent times, there have been reported cases of kidnapping, armed robbery, murder, drug-related cases, and other offenses. For this reason, this exercise was conducted. At the end of the exercise, the total number of suspects arrested at 217, made up of 194 males and 19 females. As this, quantity of dry leaves suspected to be Indian hemp, toffees suspected to be laced with narcotic substances, quantity of tablets suspected to be tramadol, alcoholic beverages suspected to be laced with narcotic substances, 88 TV sets, 5 laptops, and 2 decoders. A number of gay, gaming equipment and quantities of condom were also retrieved. <laughs> also, we have money in the sum of 23,997.50 Ghana cities. After this exercise, those who have been arrested will be screened and Responding to a question about the security situation in the region, especially following the case of the four missing Takrade girls, Deputy Regional Police Commander ACP Edmond Ohine Busompim described as unfair suggestions that the region is characterized by kidnappings. Now, the arrested suspects will be screened, whilst those found culpable will be dealt with by the law. In the northern region, a combined team of military and police personnel also arrested 18 suspected criminals with quantities of dry leaves suspected to be marijuana in the capital, Tamale. Eight motorbikes were also recovered after their owners bolted. The suspects are currently in detention. The team raided areas noted as havens for criminals in the Tamale metropolis, including Tipoli, Kaladan, and Gusheng Yali. A statement signed by the Northern Region Police Public Relations Officer DSP Yusuf Tanko said the aim of the exercise is to ensure regular security operations in locations where criminals converge to plan the activities in a bid to reduce crime. He said the exercise will continue at other places outside and within the metropolis to clean the region and ensure the law-abiding citizens are not threatened and attacked by criminals. DSP Tanko appealed to the citizenry in the region to support the police with information on suspected criminals to ensure the area is rid of crime. Now, the police indicates, as indicated in the statement, that they intend to make this a nationwide exercise of the swoop will be extended to other parts of the country. So the statement uh, reads, as part of efforts to ensure total security in the country, the Ghana Police Service and its security counterparts have intensified the war against crime by taking the fight to the doorsteps of criminals, the preventive measures employed shall, in, shall include cordon and surge, swoops, intelligence-led operations, among others. At the early hours of September 12, 2019, a similar exercise was conducted by the police with support from the Ghana Armed Forces at Buduburam near Kaswa in the central region. A total of 141 suspects, including 15 females, were rounded up during the operation and were all brought to the police national headquarters for screening. Those found culpable shall be taken through the legal process. This special exercise shall be replicated nationwide. The public is therefore entreated to provide vital information to assist the police on fighting crime. And it's issued by the Police Public Affairs Directorate at the police headquarters here in Accra. Elsewhere, a total of 25 suspected commercial sex workers have been arrested in different brothels in Kranza and Kintampo in the Bono East region. 
The sweep conducted by the Regional Immigration Command was to sweep the region of illegal immigrants. The women will be sent to Accra and repatriated to Nigeria. There's more in the following report by Anna Sabit. The Bunu East Regional Immigration Command has arrested 25 Nigerian women suspected to be engaged in prostitution. Regional Commander Superintendent E.A. Anno in an interview with Joy News stated that the operation that led to the arrest of these ladies was carried out in Kranza and Kintampo within the early hours of Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, having told the 11 municipal and district assemblies within the region with the regional minister, we decided to come back and strategize and then know how we we'll start our operations within the region. Um, we decided to, in security balance, we call it sweeping. We decided to sweep the entire region of its uh, uh, foreigners who are not expected to remain in the country. So Saturday at dawn, we started from Nkranza South, where we arrested 12 suspects. Um, their activities in the districts uh, was not the best. So we arrested them, brought them, and then kept them in custody. Then on Sunday dawn, whilst it was raining, we also did a second operation at Kintampo South, that is the Kintampo municipality, where we arrested 13 of them. Fortunately, we were able to get uh, the, the, the queen, let me put it this way, the queen and the son who operates the brutal. There we had 13 of them, which we are preparing to send them to the headquarters for further processes. So, so far, I would say our strategy for now is to sweep the entire region of foreigners who are not fit to be in the region. That is what we are doing now. Superintendent Anno indicated that most of these suspected prostitutes do not have passports and identification cards, and the few who had have overstayed their permits. When we check them, about 80% of them even don't have passports or IDs. Those who have have overstayed and they don't have the necessary uh, permits to remain in the country. Moreover, they involve themselves in commercial sex activities and all kinds of things, which for us is not the best, and we need to clear them from, 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 from the region. He indicated that with security heightened in other parts of the country, most of these commercial sex workers are trooping into the Bruno East region where they could hide and continue with their illegal trade. You know, security thrives on intelligence. And like I said, it looks as if Kumasi, Accra, and other areas are too hot for them to stay. So we have realized that they are drifting into the other districts. You know, every, <laughs> every sex worker will want to operate in an area where he will have his peace and it will be safe for, 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 for such a person. So, like I said, security thrives on intelligence and we are working to sweep the entire 11 districts and municipal assemblies within the region. The woman suspected to own the brothel where 13 of these girls were arrested in Kintampo, however, denied having any link with the 13 arrested girls. She stated that she's been in the country for the past 14 years. I married in Ghana since 14 years for Banancho. I'm born with Ghana man for Banancho. After the man died four years ago, I came out to come and do cook Nigeria food and drink standing. There were, however, contradictions with the Queen's statement and that of her daughter. While the mother indicated that she's been in Ghana for only 14 years, her daughter claimed she was born in the country on the 14th of February in the year 2000. That is 19 years ago. I was born in Ghana, yeah. I was born in 2014, February. And your mother said she's been in Ghana for only 14 years. And you were born in 2000, that is 19 years ago, in Ghana. How? 
I don't know what I know. I was born in 14, 14 February in, in Ghana. I was born in Kintampo Village. You've been in Ghana since your birth. Yes, please. Though the unit is being faced with logistical constraints, Superintendent E.A. Anno added that they will continue to work towards sweeping out all illegal immigrants from the region. The Electoral Commission has dropped hints of plans to merge the country's weak and non-performing political parties. EC Chairperson Jean Mensah, during a visit to the presidency on Thursday, explained the commission is having to consider the option because the current legal regime does not give it, it, does not give it enough power to sanction such parties. She says her office will review a report a commission on the exercise. Latif Idris has more. The visit by the Electoral Commission chairperson and her deputies marks the end of a national consultative meeting the commission has had with political parties and other key stakeholders in the electoral process. The commission, according to Jen Mensa, has rolled out programs to fix what she refers to as the weak institution she inherited. One of such is to merge weak political parties. We've also undertaken institutional visits to the parties. And the whole idea is to find out which parties really exist and which parties do not exist. And the report has been prepared. The commission is yet to sit on it and take a decision. The difficulty we have, Mr. President, is that our laws are very, very vague. And if you look at the provision that requires parties to have at least two thirds of offices in, in the districts, there are no sanctions when they do not have those offices. The only sanctions we find is that parties should be filing their returns. And unfortunately, since 1992, we've only had one year when a party has filed its returns. So it really, we, our hands are, are sort of tied. But at the same time, as a commission, we believe that 26 years of, in the life of the country's democracy, we've come very far. The view that they should be given an opportunity, we should nurture them. But we believe 26 years is a long time. And so as a commission, we, we are going to look at the report closely and basically meet with those who have not performed, those who do not exist, and try to encourage them to merge with other parties to form measures. Addressing the Electoral Commission Chair and her deputies here at the Jubilee House, the President, Nana Dodankwe Kufuadu expressed satisfaction about the ongoing reforms at the Electoral Commission and steps that are being taken by the EC to free the state's electoral process from foreign capture. But it's also extremely important to hear about the efforts you're making to strengthen the Electoral Commission itself and, uh, and enhancing its institutional capacity. Uh, the description that you made of it as a free-for-all institution is not comforting for the people of Ghana to hear that, that at the heart of the democratic system is, a, is an institution of such sensitivity as the Electoral Commission and that it works in a free-for-all manner. I think that that is something that um, uh, people will be very, uh, very alarmed to hear about that being the situation in the times past. And I think that all the decisions that you're making to enhance capacity and bring some level of quality to the internal administration and management of the Electoral Commission itself should be welcomed by all right-thinking people in, in our country to have conditions of service properly worked out, a scheme of service, a governance structure. All those things, I think, that are matters of, of, uh, of, 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 of concern. And it is good that publicly these matters are now being addressed. President Kufuadu urged the Commission to maintain a high standard. He warned he does not need favors from the Commission to win the upcoming 2020 elections. I, I don't need the Electoral Commission to win an election. And I don't want to win an, electoral, an election in Ghana because of the Electoral Commission. I want to win an election in Ghana because of the people of Ghana, that they make a free and open choice, that uh, a Kufuado will be again their choice. The EC also announced the successful termination of contract with a foreign IT firm that was paid some $5.2 million annually since 2012 to manage the commission's IT system. Uh, thousands of eligible Ghanaian voters may be disenfranchised with challenges plaguing the ongoing voter exhibition exercise 
are not addressed. That's according to the opposition NDC, which says many voters have been unable to go through the process due to some shortcomings identified with it. According to the party, its checks across the country show many of the constituencies have materials arriving late, while others did not begin on day one as advertised. Addressing a news conference in Accra, Director of Elections of the Free Ankara maintained the EC breached the law by not making the voter rules of 2012, 2016 and the 2019 provisional register available to the party. The progress of the exhibitions can so far be described as a gross violation of the Public Elections Regulations Voter Registration CI-91. As a result of the EC's own planning or lack of planning, development and operations of the exhibition exercise, which is frustrating prospective and registered voters across the country. Majority of those who visited their centers cannot find their names on the voters register. Reports from Ponkatamaso, for instance, indicate that most of the old and newly registered voters cannot find their names when they visited the centers where they have constantly voted in the past. Those on the precise problems of the exhibition exercise are associated with the software introduced by the EC, which has some defects. In the OT region, the exercise could not commence in several centers as scheduled by the EC timetable. It could not happen in Nkwanta North, Nkwanta South, Krachi in Chumuru, and Krachi East. The EC officials assigned to these constituencies attributed these developments to the late arrival of their materials. Reports from Eastern Region indicate that materials generally, generally arrive late in most of the constituencies. The worst affected was Afram Plains, with the materials arriving at 12 noon. Due to the late arrival of materials in Afram Plains, the exercise could not take place on the 10th of September. Reports from Esujamai indicates that at Manya and Yoyim centers, most of the new people who registered during the just ended limited registration were classified as face only. The party is also alleging the printing of electoral materials for the exercise has been outsourced, describing it as an illegality. Else they have refused to give NDC a soft copy of the register, which we demanded and which is our right constitutionally. We have information that the national security operative was given a soft copy of the register and we can produce the name at the right time. What has national security got to do with register? Three, they are not the political party. For the first time, the printing of the registers is being done by an external entity, by back press. All over the years, it is the EC staff. If you go to the EC, they have a elaborate system for printing. All the register we've ever is done inside the EC because it's a security document. They don't give them out. It's never given out. Because before, if you're going to give documents out, it means you have to give the soft copy out. That is why any printing of ballot papers or any material that is going out, the political parties are involved. The party is vowing to resist any attempt by the EC to disenfranchise Ghanaians through the haphazardly organized exhibition process. What the EC has offered so far looks amateurish, unprofessional, and untidy. It is important for the Electoral Commission, headed by Madame Jim Mensa, to take immediate remedial action and salvage the situation before it gets out of hand. So we have a commission where consistently, when they are going to embark on a program, we advise them, we tell them potential challenges, because we are major stakeholders, we've been involved in this for a long time, they will not listen, and then they will go and hit the wall. Common exhibition of voters register, we're having these challenges. How do you expect us to be confident that they have the capacity and capability to run a major election in 2020, which is much more complex. And you should be worried. Ghanaians should be worried. Because the level 
of administrative incompetence being exhibited is totally untenable. These are basic things that a commission that is 20-something years old should be able to handle. We're taking a break here on Joy News. Prime Vasila had two survivors of electric shocks by a high-tension cable at Winchi in the Shanti region during a funeral discharged from hospital after two others who were with them were killed instantly. And then in business, GIP considers lowering minimum capital requirement for foreign investors as investment validation report by Katz International and World Economic Forum indicate some investors are looking elsewhere other than Ghana. Stay tuned in. We'll be back in a bit. Two residents of Wenchi in the Shanti region who survived electric shocks by high-tension power lines have been discharged from the Konongo Government Hospital. Two others who were with them at the time died instantly when the tent they were relocating at funeral came into contact with a sagging high-tension cable. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin has more. <laughs> We were dismantling the tent. No, I said we were filming. No, I said we were blending and fancy. Oh, yes, yes, this one. We want to kick it. And suddenly we got electrocuted. I also felt the shock, and I woke up at the hospital. They made me feel no. Me no no be at the TV. At the TV, I made me feel me no at the hospital. Yao Frimpong is one of the survivors of the electric shock. Frimpong and another who survived the incident have been discharged from the Konongo Hospital. Two people died after being electrocuted on Sunday. The deceased have been identified as Yao Edu, 28, and Daniel Reku, 26. He has wife of the late Yao Edu, Sewa Patricia. <laughs> Mr. Edu left behind three children. Abna Asantiwa, who witnessed the incident, said it could have been avoided. From where I was, I saw the tent touch the live wire, and all four of them got electrocuted. All efforts to speak to the electricity company of Ghana have been futile. We're taking a break. We'll bring you show business. Psychiatric units in hospitals up north desperately need medication to improve health conditions of patients. There is also a shortage of drugs for Gavin's free psychiatric medicine scheme, which has led to the relapse and worsening conditions of patients. A report by Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin. An estimated 13% of Ghana's adult population is said to suffer various forms of mental health disorder. Managing these patients requires availability of psychiatric drugs, especially at psychiatric hospitals. But that is not the situation as managers of these facilities complain of frequent shortages which can persist for months. Basic Needs Ghana is an organization that promotes the rights and needs of patients with mental health issues. Officials observe the ever-increasing cost of accessing care has given rise to self-medication. 
Dokrugu Adan Iaya is program's manager of the organization. He says for the past six years, no medicines have been procured for the three major psychiatric hospitals in the country. Generally, there has been a shortfall in the procurement of psychotropic medicines in Ghana. Some will tell you that over the last five or six years, no medicines have been procured that is sufficient enough even for the three psychiatric hospitals, let, let alone to consider seven the regional hospitals, the district facilities, and then the sub-district uh, mental health facilities. So this has been a big problem. And once patients whose conditions require medication don't get the medication, then their conditions continue to deteriorate. Those who are doing well on treatment will begin to relapse. And those who are yet to begin treatment, you know, only have to pray and hope that their families are able to get the money to be able to purchase the medicines from the open market or from pharmacies where they, they are prescribed and then they go to buy. Peace and Love Hospital and Breast Care International periodically solicit donation of high quality psychiatric drugs from abroad for distribution to patients with mental health issues. In the last intervention, the two have donated 7,680 bottles of essential psychiatric drug Risperdal to hospitals in the five regions of the northern part of the package was made possible via Direct Relief, a US-based non-governmental organization. Chief Executive of Peace and Love Hospital, Dr. Beatrice Riafia Dai, underscores the need to support patients with mental health issues. And we had the basic needs uh, representative saying that these drugs are not on the national health insurance. And these are very expensive drugs. So you ask yourself, what should the patients do, especially those who do not have? What should they do? Are they going to remain in that situation forever? If we do that, then it means we are also not um, playing our parts well. Because often, as a nation, we have to make sure that everyone gets the health care that he or she needs. The universal health coverage that the United Nations, the WHO, the UICC, the NCD Alliance are all talking about is clearly demonstrated in things like this. Everyone, every uh, human being has the right to remain healthy. And in some cases, their situation can be improved only when they get access to the drugs they need. The group hopes government will come to the aid of these facilities to alleviate the plight of patients. For John News, Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin's report. Former Deputy National Commander for Operation Vanguard, ACP Ibrahim Akwe, says investment into the education sector is likely to go waste because people in mining communities are attracted to Galamse. Speaking, we join you on the sidelines of a training program for police officers by the Legal Resource Center. ACP Akwe called on stakeholders to help deal with the truancy among school children since it is a direct effect on the fight against illegal mining. One of the negative impacts that illegal mining has on the children is that uh, they become truants. You see, it creates child delinquency. They, they, instead of them to go to school, they will decide to look for quick money. So if you go to most of the schools, yes, I wrote my first project work when I, I, I was at the teacher training college. I did effect of illegal mining on education. And uh, I realized that it has an adverse effect on the children. One, it's, it doesn't let them crave for education because they want to get rich quick. So they abandon education for the persons of what of money that is it also creates some sort of disrespect even the children feel that they even have money than the teachers who are standing in front of them to teach them so you can just see that challenge so in fact the, 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 it doesn't also give the teachers the, 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 the desire to impact because it is very hurting my principal once said that it is very hurting for a teacher to stand and teach a child who doesn't respect him or her 
Multiple sale and duplicated ownership of land is at the heart of land litigation and associated land guard, canker and other crimes. The effect on individuals and the economy as a whole can be costly and in some instances fatal. Thankfully, computer engineering students from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology have found ways to reverse this trend. They are leveraging an existing technology known as blockchain to inject sanity in land ownership. On Tech Thursday, Lava Films Kwesi Devra speaks with the students who seek to heal one of Ghana's biggest social headaches. A paper presented at a fourth UMAT Biennial International Mining and Mineral Conference revealed land cases comprise about 59% of total legal tassels in Ghana. Though the average land cases per year is 25%, the rate of settlement is as low as 10%. Though Ghana has a huge land size, it becomes difficult when people try to acquire parcels parcels of land simply because there is general indiscipline in the land market and then a typical problem is dual ownership where we have two people having legal documents to the same piece of land. Final year students Victoria Aki Delali and Kwabnam Pon Sabwati decided to experiment with blockchain technology. It is an encryption technology used in Bitcoin transaction. So a blockchain is a growing list of records called blocks which are linked using cryptography. So we have so many blocks linked together and then a block contains the information the block and it goes on and on and on forming a long chain of blocks linked together. By design, a blockchain is resistant to the modification of data. Once the data has been recorded and appended to the chain, it becomes very difficult to alter that data without subsequently altering all the previous blocks. The students sought to understand existing blockchain and non-blockchain models. It involves selection and justification of a blockchain framework and using a selected framework to create a theoretical model. We studied into that blockchain technology and then we've come up with a proposed model. The students have high hopes for the future. This particular model would be implemented in programming or in software terms like computer applications, mobile phone applications, um, desktop applications, and then it would successfully be used in managing lands, which would settle the disputes or the conflicts and problems like multiple ownership of lands that we, we discovered in our research. Report. Ranking member of the Local Government and Rural Development Committee of Parliament, Neil Antivandapo, is calling for a non-partisan approach to end the sanitation crisis facing the country. The call comes after the Integrated Recycling and Compost Plant Limited revealed the plant meant to recycle waste will shut down due to the high operating cost. Its general manager, Betty Brown Nyadu, made this known during a tour by the Joint Committees of Local Government and Rural Development, Works and Housing, and Environment Science and Technology here in Accra. Philip Ankara has more in this report read to you. The facility, also known as the Accra Waste Recovery Park and located on the Kolebu Road, has an 80% waste recovery rate and the capacity to handle 400 tons of solid waste. But the facility manager, Betty Brown Yado, says they will be forced to shut down if government fails to intervene. We are saying that government should intervene by paying some management fees to augment the subsidy that we are giving to these tricycle operators so that whatever it is that we recoup, we can use it to augment what we have to manage this place. Staying to my honorable members of parliament is to advocate, you know, for some partnership with government to pay at least for our operational costs. If the intervention I'm seeking doesn't come through, it will be very, very difficult to operate this place because we will make nothing. The IGF of this place cannot even buy me diesel to feed my plant. And so it will mean that the plant will have to be closed down because the, the, you cannot guarantee the sustainability of this place if government doesn't intervene at a certain point. Responding to her, the MP for Ododododo, Neil Lante Van der Poy, said a non-partisan long-term development plan is needed to tackle the situation. We should now put maybe a little, a little uh, damp on the MPP and DC politics for some time and look at how we can advance this course and make sure all of us as a people come get committed as politicians, as government, as opposition, we get committed to the fact that this is something worth pursuing and as the people, this is what we are going to do. So that when you get up tomorrow, you know that we have a roadmap, we have a plan. 
We have a policy that we are building one of this in every regional capital in the next 10, the next 15 years. So every government that comes knows the agenda and pursues it. And then finally, in 10 to 20 years' time, our children will not go through what we have been through now. At the Lavender Hill Fecal and Muda Waste Treatment Plant, Head of Process Engineering, Engineer Eric Simon Amofa Sakodie, urged the public to desist from dropping foreign materials into the toilets. He said, aside causing damage to their treatment machines, they incur extra costs to dispose of those wastes properly. We are supposed to treat liquid waste, not solid waste. But we receive a lot of solid waste, like the aborted babies, the phones, the wallets, the slippers, sand. And um, it's really affecting our operations, like our palms and the rest. So we advise the public, those who used to, or who are in the habit of putting those rubbish, debris, into their septic tanks, into the public toilet, they should put an end to that. Every month we pay about 20,000 cities to dispose it of. Upon reaching the Don landfill site, the team was met with smoke emanating from the pile of waste, which the manager of the facility, Peter Dagadu, says is the aftermath of an inferno which occurred at the facility in August this year. He said there's a proposal before the Tema Municipal Assembly for the facility to be shut down. So there are a lot of discussions going on as we speak to tackle this situation. Yes. Um, to shut down the site to deal with the fire and then and then put in an aftercare management plan so while this facility will not create any nuisance for anybody living close or anybody coming to this facility well i am not in the position the tma would be in a position the owners of the landfill would be in a position to to, to provide that information currently we are we've relocated to the old dam site as a temporary measure because this is where 60 percent of waste within the greater Accra metropolitan, metropolitan area comes so if there's no alternative then we all will be in crisis so local government and rural development committee vice chairperson suleiman adamu sanit promised managers of the facility they will be helped to resolve their challenges we came to look at the facilities and to look at, uh, to also listen to the technical people working on the facility and the challenges that they have in terms of operations and in terms of installation and everything. They've mentioned some figures in terms of how much they charge for lifting and for receiving uh, waste materials that come here and uh, how low the, 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 the figure is for their operations and it gives them a lot of challenge. Uh, we've seen that, yes, they are doing something very, very important for us modern facility addressing our sanitation needs. So we think that we need, as a government, to support what they are doing. And as a committee, or three committees that are here, we are going to sit down, make recommendations to government. We are not just going to uh, make statements at a plenary in parliament and leave it as that. We are going to come forward with uh, workable and durable uh, uh, recommendations. The team also made a quick stop at the Accra compost and recycling plant. All right, we're taking a break. We'll bring you business news. More business news next.